Good evening, everyone. We have a very big LT today here, and uh, well, we can be since the topic for today's uh, conversation is called intimacy. We may I request that we sit closer to the front, right? According to the theme of today's uh, conversation, shall we move closer to the front, and then we can have a 
a more intimate discussion with our guests today. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, students of SUTD. I'm Yo Kang Shua, Assistant Professor of History, Theory, Reason at SUTD here. Uh, today we have, in this uh, Singapore Contemporary Architecture Conversation, we are very happy to have uh, Zhang Yongte and Ling Hao to talk to us about their practice and their ideas about design. Uh, the title of the, today's conversation is uh, conceived by Joshua, Joshua Kumura, who sent his apologies today that he can't make it that is on the title Intimacy. And uh, why intim Intimacy? Uh, both Yongte and Ling Hao's work, they create a sort of houses and architecture that appear to have some sort of intimate adaptation to the lives of the inhabitants. Right? So the house is a, like a little bespoke object and is designed to make adaptation for daily rituals and interaction. So this is actually quite uh, contrary to a very stereotypical idea of an architect that imposes one's idea or one's belief about design on the inhabitants. So the question is that how does then the sensitive architect himself project the lives of the inhabitants through the design of the architecture? So today we will have Yongte and Ling Hao who will each present a short presentation of their work and the design ideas and belief for around 15 to 20 minutes. And then we'll have a, we'll have a little conversation and we'll open up the floor to have a very intimate discussion about their works. So I was asked to introduce um, our two guests and I was introduced our first speaker, Ling Hao. And while we all know who is Ling Hao, I hope you do. Right? But he is somewhat a sort of mysterious person. There's very little information about his bios or CV. Right? And uh, perhaps it's very quite apt of today's uh, topic intimacy. You know? He is quite intimate, private, highly mysterious person. And uh, perhaps that, through his works, we get to know more about him as a person and there's no need for us to know about his background. Now, without further ado, let's invite <laughs> Ling Hao to tell us about his uh, design belief and his work. Thank you. Good I'm going to sit down.
sorry about the delay, the files mysteriously disappeared and uh, we have to reload the file again. Okay. Uh, I, I'll just uh, talk through uh, my slides. I have a lot of slides, but um, they're arranged um, in a kind of a flowy manner. And um, um, yeah, so the I, I've been in Singapore now for about um, twenty over years. When I first came to Singapore, I stayed in the Dok and now I stay still in the East. But I always stay in the HTV. And um, so, in a way, I have um, grown in relation to the world of the HTV. And this slide is a view um, of the Dok. Um, and in this slide, um, maybe it is about a 40 year old kind of uh, world. And in this world, the rain trees have uh, really matured and the experience of being an HDB um, is something that I now has become quite personal to me. And so the, and what is the experience? And maybe one of the experiences is the feeling of freedom. Uh, freedom in a sense to casually move as you like. In a, in, a, in a way that you can't move um, in maybe other kinds of places in Singapore. So I think maybe it's a kind, quite a unique kind of um, world that has um, appeared um, with um, the way that um, the, the spaces between buildings and also in a way the behaviours that are allowed or that are possible within this kind of environment. So I want to begin um, by showing a series of drawings and so, so the HDB world, um, if you, uh, the, the plot ratio is roughly let's say around 2.8 which um, it's already, uh, so 2.8 if you say that HDB means that you understand the kind of people around you, the density that is there. So what's happening um, in the cities around this part of the world is um, a, a one great big change in density. So this um, was a project in KL that we did last year where the city um, is looking at densities from 5 to 10. So really, really dense, but Paris is a density of around 5, so also not so dense. But the, the trend is to build um, really high. So we wanted to make something that was uh, not so high and more dense horizontally. But I also just wanted to, um, but these drawings were done after the project was um, uh, rushed out. And this project was a kind of an exercise I did with a graduate from SUTD, Yishen. So with the drawings, what we wanted to make um, was to, in a way, imagine how we would uh, live how the feelings would be to be in this thing that we were talking about. And I think that's something that um, is what uh, I'm interested in and the idea that 
what we make is also becomes a place that we build memories with, and in a way it um, informs us and and shows us how to relate to uh, each other. So in this project, we were interested in um, thinking how the exterior spaces could become um, a way to think about the way you arrange things. So these are a series of drawings, and um, I've arranged my slides in a way in a kind of a reverse. So I go, so literally we go into these projects and we walk on. So in, in this um, housing, um, a scene here is shown of um, that there's a kind of a corridor around the units, but this corridor is a kind of a, a place where you do things and meet your, meet your neighbours. So I, I will just um, run these images and some idea that um, this um, shared space is also a space that you do things, it's not just um, your space is inside. Uh, one kind of plan that we did with the circulation around the periphery, but the periphery is also um, a place where they garden, they hang their clothes, where they meet each other, and it's also part of their everyday. Uh, it's next to a river, and the idea that um, again is the as the development matures, uh, uh, scenery happens where you know the the experience of the relation to the exterior is the dominant. And the idea that the ground is um, a place where people can do things um, with each other. So this is a construction site and um, I'm going to show a series of houses because that was the theme that was given to us. But in the last few houses that we did, I, we worked with one contractor and um, this is the house that um, the contractors were building, but it was also where they were cooking. Um, and they, um, so these rooms that they built, they in a way become the first inhabitants. But the, the kind of um, workers, the contractors that we work with in Singapore, they, they are uh, from uh, other parts of the world, and their everyday um, is revolves around the, the construction site and uh, whether they're mixing cement or cooking, it, in a way it's like a similar kind of activity. So the rooms as um, they are our homes before the, the for the taken over. And in this project, um, we wanted to make this um, floor with uh, crushed glass inside, so the client brought the various wine bottles and they were crushed literally on site. And then this became like the terrazzo floor. And then the terrazzo that is on the building. So this house um, is a small inner terrace and we wanted to make a house where um, it would be very open and the, the making of the building, the structure would be the finish, but also the, that kind of um, hardiness of the structure would allow this kind of uh, air to permeate. And uh, the ground is a kind of very open space where you, the neighbours also become part of the house. And it's arranged in a kind of a way where you're always meandering through. Every surface is curved, so the experience is uh, like you're just part of a space. And so the upper even if it's even though it's an inter terrace, the the structure in a way like hangs over the building, and then the and the gaps between the volumes and the party wall allow the natural light to permeate through the day. And then as you come out, there's more of this kind of thing, and you are in this kind of spaces where previously the worker was uh, cooking. And even though you're inside the house, the, the outside is part of the interior. 
uh, models showing the simple change in levels, the uh, canopies of the curves. So, uh, we move to uh, another project where here's a view of the roof. And the roof um, is a space where the sky becomes part of your home. But also the roof affords this view of the periphery. And I think the experience of staying at the HTB is also really the experience of the surrounding. Because from every unit of a HTB, you will always have, in a way, quite interesting and very far away views. So I think the, a person growing up in Singapore will be very used to the idea of a view that is um, very far. And in this roof um, was, was left um, very simply for various kinds of um, grass to grow. And over a period of um, a few months, many things came with the wind. So I think uh, we are, with this house, we were also really interested in being open to the surrounding. And being open also means that allowing other things to come, like uh, seeds. And over a few months, again, the building changes with this uh, transformation. And the rooms on the higher level um, are all open. You can open them up, and when you open up, you are part of many things. So even though you're in a home, you're also part of the streets. So now there's a series of scenes. Um, a lot of the housing estates for terrace houses were aligned east-west which is in a way not the best facing, but it's a historical um, uh, thing from the past. Maybe the main roads were running um, in that way, and then all the housing estates were then from um, continuing on that kind of relationship. But this house is generally around six to seven meter wide, and it's a kind of a continuation, I think also from the time of the shop houses where also, the size of timber would be related to this kind of dimension. But these houses are now all being rebuilt in Singapore on the same lot. So, the, in the east west facing, um, if you open it up, you get the heat, but you also get this um, great change in the weather. So, you are always um, getting the, the atmosphere is always changing if the house is exposed to the elements. So it's a house where um, it's arranged in a, in a series of staggers and there's a, uh, endless kinds of uh, views. Uh, sections through the house, so as you walk through different parts of the house, the section continuously changes. And so while this um, period of um, increasing, increased density, increase in density in houses of Singapore, um, it also makes houses really big, which I think in a way maybe are not necessarily what houses need to be. But with that kind of bigness, then um, our interest was also to allow more communication, more openness instead of separation. So in the sections that you see, they are open um, on the edges and the light filters through and you're always looking at um, different people. So this kind of uh, pathways. And the light filters all the way down to the lower level. And then from the street, the rooms are also open. And in the plan, um, there are a series of staggering kind of uh, levels and you are, your body as you move through this uh, long space you actually walk and turn and turn and, and so on but what I'm saying is that the body also then has an experience of using this house and the, the closeness that will be built up to this house is by your movement so it's not a house let's say where there's a staircase and then you go into the rooms but it's a house um, and it's an everyday experience where the change in the weather would affect the interior and also become and also would also be very different in each of the different parts. So in a way it's like a little uh, city. 
and this is a view from the HDB of that uh, housing estate that the house is in. But again, if you look at this view, but if you actually go and walk on the streets of this, let's say this view, it would be a very rich experience because you would encounter many things. You, know, you would encounter bees or the butterflies, or you would encounter a helper washing a car. So that kind of liveliness, um, which is possible on the streets, we wanted to bring into the house. So we moved to Geelang, and this is um, a view from a fourth level, a, a new view that was built here. And in this house, um, uh, the one that we did is uh, kind of a, with a mesh screen. Again, um, as you can understand now, my, my interest is really when we're making these bigger houses, how to not just make uh, enclosed volumes, but to make them also open. So the, uh, this mesh allows the air to move through. And then from the rooms, um, it's a width of 5 meters, but um, there's a smaller volume and then you can walk around the smaller spaces and then the light also moves through. But in the middle, we made a kind of a, a, a courtyard that's connected and that's also how you move around the house. You walk around this courtyard connecting the new building and the, the older shop house and in the courtyard it's um, planted and when you are right in the middle of the house it's on the third level you are next to the plants and you walk and meander around so when the wind uh, moves you will be uh, surrounded by the rustling of the leaves even though you are like, deep in the building So the, the structure is a new structure that was inserted into an old um, shop house. So here's the steel structure coming up. And uh, it's a flip, but the, the, basically it's an old long um, shop house with a structure, steel structure that's been inserted. And uh, this shows the, the, the old shop house with the new addition of the building at the back. And then a staircase um, allows you to walk from the connecting every space and you can walk um, continuously without a dead end. Uh, but so the, in a way the house also becomes a place that you can explore. And then if you go back to the street, this, the street is the conserved area Unfortunately, the, the idea of a shop house is that you are able to work below and um, in a way um, sleep upstairs. But this um, rezoning and this rechanging only now allows um, it to be a residential area. And I think maybe that's not a really um, positive change to the idea of the shop house. So I think that that's, that's the other thing that I think my, my thinking of about the idea of the city as a city should be a place that everybody should be able to um, do uh, maybe many things, not be um, zoned into different activities. A zoom out of Geelang. And then we go to another area, this is towards the north of Singapore. And on the left is the Macritchie Reservoir, which is from the 19th century, if I'm correct. And then the housing estate on the right is um, from the early uh, 20th century, 1950s. So there were civil servant housing built. So my, the client who um, came to stay here was interested to stay in this area because of the, the nature reserve. So the housing on the right is actually in the valley. And his house is the one that has the planted roof, but um, the reserve is um, actually very far away. But um, as you can see, because it's in the valley, the reserve comes very near to the house. So he um, was a special kind of um, client. Um, when I met him, I 
at only uh, one, I mean, he sent me an email and I met him on uh, the following day, uh, following two days. And uh, after I sent him my fee quote in about one day time, he just said, okay. And I didn't really know what he did and what he was um, uh, really able to decide very fast. So this is the, the roof and then behind is the McRitchie Reservoir. So his uh, brief was uh, very generic, you know, like five, four bedrooms, um, toilets, kitchen, etc. But he said he wanted to have um, gardens, he wanted to plant. He also wanted a modest house, which is, um, if, you, if you will later find out, is a, not a usual request in Singapore. And this is um, after about three years, and the plants from the first level have grown up to the roof. And the garden is something that he's planted over this period. And these are the rooms inside, and they're very small, they're even smaller than HDB rooms. And uh, they were done such that there could be this kind of uh, generous space to um, let the light in. It's um, in, in the middle and where you could plant. And the house is very open. And this is the garden um, that was that's in the living room. And so the, they eat and they watch TV and they cook um, in this kind of uh, shared space. So that's a, actually a very small space, but um, it feels really generous because the light comes in and every time you go, the plant has changed and plants change really small, slowly. But um, because it has this kind of um, exposure to, the, to other things, the, the feeling of the house um, is then not about the size, it's really that it, is, it contains so many different kinds of worlds. So in a way, this is house is like a house to Make it a world, make an environment. So the house is in the valley and the garden in the beginning. And that's actually the client. A drawing showing the different spaces of the house. So there are many, many different paths to walk in this small space. And in the house, in the housing estate, um, so the, if you go and, and see every house, it's really generic. Every house has a car park, the living room, the kitchen, the dining, and then, then the staircase and the rooms upstairs. So but in, in this house, the, the idea that you can plant in different parts um, changes the experience. Something happened to destroy, but um, it's a kind of a, a roof plan and then a kind of a terrain but so the in a bigger kind of house but we wanted to make um, this big house which would then become like a really big world um, a kind of uh, place that's really surrounded by the openness and the pathways and the corridors uh, make up more than the rooms So the structure shows how it's um, open, more open than closed. And I want to end um, with um, three slides. Um, this is um, when I first came to Singapore, um, um, 1993, yeah. So I was working with um, an architect, Tang Wan Lee Architect. So um, the idea of working was um, where I learned to work as an architect in a way because that was when I first started, um, when I first left school. And I think that's very important when you all leave school, the first few years actually the, um, will really change your life in uh, whichever way. But the working in this space also meant that every Friday we would um, stop work, we would actually plan to have a party. So the idea of work um, also is not is, is also part of like, how you can think about lives. Uh. But to do that also meant that we would always um, take the, use the courtyard. Because uh, if you go outside in this um, environment, I always think that you feel um, comfortable and you know how to have a nice time you know, with each other. And it's different if you are in an interior space. 
like a fully interiorized space like this theater, the, the feelings are different. And um, before the courtyard was renovated, this was the space that uh, when I went and in the courtyard, the shop house. Um, so this shop house is like um, the Geylang shop house. It's maybe from the 1920s. Um, again, transforming. But the, you saw, uh, this is like a, the old building at the back. I mean, the old courtyard that's falling apart. But the gestures of putting a glass and um, making a kind of, a, let's say, less humid kind of interior, but still allowing the, the air and the light to feel like it's coming through and the painting is by him and they are to me like you know like also this light that's coming to the perforation that was the interest of um, this Tengwanli and this kind of um, porosity and this being part of their surrounding I think that's something that um, he also allowed us to um, get in a way um, this I put in because um, again I always think the Singapore is part of a region, and as you know, in your everyday practice, really, your the people that work with, from the clients to the.